arrive at a mansion and you're like, man, it's such a beautiful blue sky day. It's absolutely gorgeous. This button, we can cycle the day settings. We can change it to dark and have stars come out at dusk. And we can go into deep night where it's completely black and the stars are just vibrant. And maybe you've been on too late and daybreak has just arrived. Now at the mansion in your worlds too, you can cycle through to get the exact time of day you want it to be. From an outside state, you'll note that we have the stars grouping, the blue skybox grouping. We also have the clouds grouping. And you'll note when you're inside of these objects, sometimes they will turn darker. It's also important to note that you wanna make sure this whole thing is locked. So that way when you're working inside on your world, you don't accidentally move your stars or your clouds out of place. On our button, you'll note we have our sound effect and we'll have our trigger that we'll be using to run the script. So we've tagged our script in. We've also reference cabled all of the objects that we're using. Starting with a quick rundown of our variables, you'll note we have listed the clouds because the clouds cycle off and on. We've also listed the stars as a grouping of objects and we have the grouping of the skybox as well. In addition to that, you'll note we have five different colors, sunset, daybreak, night, dusk, and sky blue. Please note that if you wanted to make this an even fade, the current way to do fades requires you to separate these colors into three individual values. In this tutorial, we won't be showing how to fade between three individual values. If you're interested in that, go to the video linked in the description on how we've done that in the past. You'll also note we have a number variable for time between clicks. This prevents you from going click, 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 click between the times because we want this to feel natural. We also have the once per Boolean value, which is what prevents it from going off until the next 10 second delay is up. And we have a current state, which calculates which state are we currently in, whether that's sky blue or any of the others. Last but not least, we have an object variable, which is the button click sound effect. That's just a sound effect that we tie in. When the world is started, the first thing we do is we color the sky box sky blue. This is important because right now there's a glitch that doesn't color your objects correctly, so it's important to color it sky blue at the very beginning of the world. We then show the clouds and hide the star group, just as a kind of a getting us started, making sure everything's in the right state. On our button, there's a trigger, and this script is running on the trigger. So when the trigger is entered by the player, if once per Boolean is true, which it starts as a default of true, so it's going to run the first time, we then immediately set it to be false, so that way it only goes once per. Then we play stop sound on button click sound effect, and then we play the sound on button click sound effect. Playing stop before we do play makes it so the audio is definitely stopped, so that way the button click does play. We then send event re-enable the self with the time between click number, which is currently set to 10 seconds. So this re-enables the Boolean once per. We then set the current state to be current state plus one. So zero represents sky blue, plus one represents our next state. So here you can see we run a series of if statements, which defines when we're in a current state, what do we do? So in current state zero, we color sky blue. In current state one, we color it with the sunset color. And we continue progressing through, but there's this one really unique thing we do, which is that in our current state number two, we show the stars, we hide the clouds, and we color with dusk. And so during the night cycle, we don't have clouds and we do have stars. So then during our next state, we color it with the night color. And then when we get to current state four, we hide stars, show clouds, and color daybreak. And so that's how we get back the clouds and how we remove the stars. And when we get to state four, we know we're gonna cycle back to state zero. So we need to set current state to be negative one. So that way the next time this runs, it sets it to be zero. And as I mentioned earlier, when re-enable is received, we set once per to true. This is all relatively straightforward. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you haven't used painting objects before, it's found under your actions tab. It's the third one from the top, which is called paint object. And remember when you're doing this, there's an infinite number of options. Your current state doesn't have to be limited to five different options. You also don't need to limit whether you're hiding stars and showing clouds. You could have a whole variety of different objects that come and go. So I look forward to seeing how you guys use this. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.